My name is Marcus Bühler. I'm the McAfee Professor of Engineering at MIT, and my research deals with proteins and how proteins are used to build materials in nature. The viral pathogen of COVID-19 continues to impact the world as the pandemic spreads on a global level. As time goes on, mutations of the virus emerge, which can affect how infectious and how lethal the virus is. And there are also different forms of coronavirus diseases like SARS, MERS, and now COVID-19, and they're all caused by viruses in the same family. What is the reason why MERS is so much deadlier but less infectious than COVID-19, which transmits easily but has a lower lethality rate than MERS or SARS? Can we better understand how the molecular details of the viruses work, and if they might even provide clues for treatments or cures? Could we follow molecules in the virus, atom by atom, and better understand their behavior? All coronaviruses have characteristic crowns that stick out of the virus, called spikes, made out of proteins. Proteins are nature's choice of material for all life, and also build viruses in key parts of the virus, such as the spike protein. The spike protein is what attaches to the human cell. Through one of its receptors called ACE2, which is the receptor for both SARS and COVID-19. A virus is an incredibly tiny particle at the nanoscale, which is unimaginably small. Yet processes at that tiny level control life, disease, treatments, and potential mortality of viruses and other pathogens. On a comparative scale, if the diameter of a marble was one nanometer, then the diameter of the Earth would be about one meter. Did you know that one nanometer is about as long as your fingernail grows in one second? This gives us an idea about the vast ranges of scales involved and the challenges to engineer such tiny subjects. Nanoscience is the next frontier with incredible opportunities to interface with living systems and to generate materials with properties that far exceed those that exist today. Material particles have different properties. Think of sand and sand grains, they can be flexible, rigid, sticky, or slippery. Or think of jello as a soft material versus chalk or rocks as very hard and stiff material. These features of a material are called mechanical properties. Can we use the mechanical properties of the coronavirus spike proteins to predict infectivity and lethality of different forms of coronaviruses? Is there a direct correlation between the measurable properties of the proteins in the virus and how they move and epidemiological data? We might have found a clue to that effect. The mechanics of viruses at the nanoscale is largely unexplored territory, especially when it comes to the precise molecular motions that happen at that level. A virus must enter the cell by tricking it. It can be seen as a game of deceit, a sort of molecular hide-and-seek, where the virus is an elegant scam artist that has the ability to change shape. Think of a key and lock combination, where the key is the virus that unlocks human cells to spread the infection in the body and to others. Unlike a conventional key made out of metal, the virus protein keys are continuously changing shape. Think of a key that's malleable. Then the amount of shape change will affect how easy a key can fit into a lock. Coronavirus spike proteins are continuously moving and they can adopt different shapes, a so-called receptor accessible state referred to as the open state and a receptor inaccessible state referred to as the closed state. The open state is what provides the pathway for infection. Matter at the nanoscale is moving all the time because the kinetic energy stored in the molecules, reflecting what we call temperature at the macro level, is sufficient to deform the balance between atoms, the chemistry, similar to the motion of a plucked string. Whereas the string isn't plucked by a finger, but plucked by the internal energy of the virus, driven by the temperature. Higher temperature means more motion and the other way around. Can we understand how the virus spreads at a global level from these tiny nanoscopic motions, that is, how easily the virus changes shape? or how malleable the spike protein is under different scenarios, such as the temperature, mutations, and entirely different species of coronaviruses. In a paper published in Cell Matter, my graduate student Yi Wen Hu and I have identified a strong direct relationship between the nature, rate, and the intensity of the virus spike protein vibrations and how readily the virus could penetrate the human cell. The key result of our work is that both the overall flexibility of the upward receptor binding domain and the mobility ratio of the receptor binding domain in different conformations represent two significant factors that have a positive scaling with virus lethality. In other words, the more flexible the spike protein exhibits itself and the more distinct the open and closed states are, the higher the mortality rate. Conversely, there's an inverse scaling in terms of infectivity. The less flexible and the more similar the open and closed states are, the more infectious. We confirmed this by comparing data from present and earlier coronavirus outbreaks with these nanoscopic mechanical measures. 
The G614 mutation, for instance, that is currently dominating the COVID-19 spread around the world shows smaller fluctuations, both a smaller fluctuation level and a smaller fluctuation ratio of the open and closed states. They are more similar. Hence, it is predicted to be slightly more infectious, but slightly less lethal. How does this all work mechanistically, and how can we understand these molecular processes? The fluctuation levels measured in the molecular simulations generally indicate how active the spike protein is when binding to a human cell. The more fluctuations, the softer the protein, just like jello vibrates easily when poked, as opposed to a piece of chalk which is quite rigid and doesn't easily vibrate when poked. This might explain why higher fluctuation levels connect to higher mortality rates, as it resembles a key that can more easily change shape and more easily fit into a lock by wiggling its way in. This makes the virus more effective and hence more deadly. For instance, MERS has by far the highest fluctuation levels, and it is also the disease with the highest mortality rate. The pathogen of COVID-19, on the other hand, has the lowest mortality rate and the lowest fluctuation levels. Notably, the G614 mutation of the virus features a smaller fluctuation level than the reference COVID-19 pathogen and should therefore be less lethal. In regards to the flexibility ratio, it controls how many possible keys a virus has available in the open state to try to gain entry into the cells, whereas only the open state resembles a key sticking out. When the ratio is small, suggesting that the receptor binding domain in different state, open versus closed, have comparable flexibilities, there is a larger possibility towards a second open state in the receptor binding domain. That is because the two states are more similar and more easily switched from one to the other. This higher likelihood for multiple open state configurations sticking out of a virus increases the chances for infection, hence a higher infection rate. When the flexibility ratio gets larger, it is less likely to trigger a conformational change since the two states, open versus closed, are distinct configurations that are more difficult to change into one another and each configuration is stuck in its state and difficult to change. So the virus displays a lower infection rate. This is evident from the data where the COVID-19 pathogen features the smallest flexibility ratio leading to high infectivity as opposed to MERS that has the highest flexibility ratio by far and is much less infectious. The G614 mutation of the virus features a smaller flexibility ratio than the reference COVID-19 pathogen and should therefore be even more infectious. Altogether, this offers an exciting new concept because it relates measurable material quantities of viruses which can also be predicted by using atom-by-atom -atom modeling or perhaps experimental empirical data collection using imaging and can then provide insights into epidemiological data. Our analysis shows that epidemiological virus properties can be linked directly to pure nanomechanical vibrational aspects. This matters because it offers an alternative way of screening for new viruses and new mutations, and potentially exploring new ways to prevent infections from occurring in the first place. Because this method is based on understanding the detailed atom-by-atom -atom molecular structure of these proteins, it could be used to also screen new emergent coronaviruses or new mutations of COVID-19 to quickly assess the potential risk for the population. Digging a bit deeper into the motions of molecules, we understand why this new picture of the virus as a vibrating material is so important. All the images we see of the SARS-CoV-2 virus are a bit misleading. The viruses really don't look like that because in reality, all matter down at the nanometer scale of atoms, molecules, and viruses, they're continuously moving and vibrating. They don't look like those images you see in a textbook, website, or maybe on TV. It's fascinating that vibrational characteristics correlate so strongly with the quite distinct rates of infectivity and lethality of different kinds of coronaviruses, taken from a global database of confirmed case numbers and case fatality rates. Our analysis includes the viruses that cause MERS, SARS, COVID-19, as well as one known mutation of the COVID-19 virus itself that has been becoming increasingly prevalent around the world. This makes our method a promising tool for predicting the potential risks from any new coronaviruses that might emerge, as they likely will. Potentially, these findings could also provide a new avenue for research on possible treatments for COVID-19 and other coronavirus diseases. Looking ahead, it might be possible to find a molecule that would bind to the spike proteins in a way that it would stiffen them and thereby limit their vibrations, essentially to redraw the map that correlates the mechanics of virus proteins with lethality and infectiousness and pushing the virus to domains of less infectiousness and less mortality. This is a nanoengineering approach, enabled by the emergence of nanotechnology, to deal with the virus in a new way, complementing potentially what we can do with vaccines or therapeutics or chemical approaches. 
Another approach might be to induce opposite vibrations, for example through light or acoustic signals, to cancel out the natural ones in the spikes, similar to the way noise-canceling headphones suppress unwanted sounds. Each virus protein has a unique set of frequencies that vary ever so slightly as mutations emerge, giving the virus a unique signature and potential point of attack for intervention. Viruses sing and their sounds provide us with powerful clues to understand their function and the impact on our lives. In the following, we're going to listen to the sounds that various coronaviruses make, starting with MERS, SARS, COVID-19, and the G614 mutation of COVID-19.